Welcome to the Unity Internal Drive Replacement Demonstration. For more detailed instructions, I always refer to the applicable procedure on support.emc.com. To begin, we're going to log into Unisphere using the admin account. In this case, there is no obvious failure shown. To take a look at the internal drives, let's click on System View, select Enclosures, and then click on Top. Here we can see the internal drive for SPA and SPB. There are no faults shown, but for the purposes of this demonstration, we will replace the internal drive for SPA. Let's begin by navigating to the System Service page and then select Service Tasks. In order to replace the internal drive for Storage Processor A, or SPA, we must first put it in Service Mode. Confirm that the Enter Service Mode button for SPA is highlighted and then click Execute. When prompted, enter the service password. Entering service mode stops I.O. on the SP so that it can be safely removed. Wait until the SP fault LED is flashing alternating amber and blue before continuing to the next task. Here we can see that SPA is in service mode. Also notice that the unsafe to remove LED is illuminated on SPB. Make sure that you do not remove an SP with the unsafe to remove LED illuminated. Begin by rotating the power cord retention bale to the left and remove the power cord for SPA. Make sure any network or I.O. module cables are labeled and then remove them. Do not remove any cables from SPB. Pull the torque limit screw handle out of the SP assembly and turn it counterclockwise to release SPA from the DPE. As the handle is turned, the SP assembly extracts out of the enclosure. When the outward movement stops, the SP assembly is ready for removal. Use the handle to pull the SP assembly outward enough to grasp the sides with both hands. Then with both hands supporting the SP assembly, pull the SP assembly out of the enclosure. Place the SP assembly with top side upward on a clean, flat, static-free work surface. Verify that all SP assembly LEDs are off to ensure that the SP has completed its power off after the removal from the DPE or disk processor enclosure. While pushing down the blue release button, slide the top cover rearward approximately one half inch until it stops. Lift the top cover upward and remove it from the SP. We're going to press in on the tabs on both sides of the airflow baffle to remove it. This is not required here, but will help with the visual clarity. Locate the internal SSD, also known as an M.2 SATA board, and rotate the retaining knob counterclockwise until it is free from the mounting stud. Lift the end of the SATA board at a slight angle and then remove it completely from the slot. Insert the terminal end of the replacement SATA board into the slot on the motherboard. Place the latch retaining screw into the mounting hole and secure the SATA board to the motherboard by turning the screw clockwise. Next, align the two retaining clips on the airflow baffle with the slots on the side of the SP assembly and push downward on it to secure it to the SP. Position the top cover over the SP assembly and align it with the slots in the sides at the rear of the assembly. Pull the top cover forward approximately one half inch to secure it in place. Align the SP assembly with the enclosure slot and slide it into the slot until it stops. Turn the orange torque limit screw handle clockwise until you hear a click sound from the handle. The click sound indicates the torque limit is reached and the SP assembly is seated fully in the enclosure. Push the orange torque limit screw handle into the SP assembly until you hear a click again. The click indicates the screw handle is secured in the assembly. The SP will begin to boot into the service mode. Reconnect each I.O. module cable and network cable into the same port from which it was removed. Connect the AC power cord to the power supply and secure the cord with the retention bale. Here we can see that the SP is in the service mode with the SP fault LED flashing alternating amber and blue. Now we can log back into Unisphere to confirm the replacement. Now that we are logged back into Unisphere, we can see we have some hardware issues. These are expected errors. Let's click on the hardware error to confirm. Here we can see SPA and SPB are reporting errors. If we select SPA, we can see that it's reporting that it is in service mode. If we click on SPB, we can see that it's reporting an unsafe to remove condition. Since these are both expected errors, we can now go back to the service task page and reboot SPA. This action will reboot SPA into normal mode. 
Select Reboot for SPA and then click on Execute. When prompted, enter the service password. Note that it may take up to 20 minutes for the system to complete its reboot and return to normal. After approximately 20 minutes, log out and log back into Unisphere to refresh the view. Here we can see that both SPA and SPB are reporting an OK status in normal mode. Now let's check the alerts page. Here we can see the alerts that would be generated during this procedure, starting with the user executing the SPA service mode task. Then we see SPA and its associated components shutting down and coming back up, and finally ending with the storage system operating in normal mode. To complete the SSD replacement task, we're going to acknowledge all the alerts associated with this action. This completes the Unity internal SSD replacement demonstration.